Hi everyone, welcome back to the kitchen worktop again. I haven't quite worked out what I'm going to call this uh, tutorial today, but what we're essentially going to do is control the lights in network B via the devices in network A. Okay? So an action in network A is going to cause a consequence in network B. You'll see that two of the devices are actually wired together, either or, even though they're actually part of different networks. And I'll explain why soon. So the devices we have in network A, I've got to apologise in advance. I've unfortunately had to change phone and can't uh, actually superimpose this image over the top of my videos right now because I can't screen record on this. Uh, if I need to show anything, what I'll do is I'll uh, take a separate shot and I'll zoom in to the uh, to the phone if needed. But in network A, we've got an A2D in DALI broadcast mode. Okay, which you can see there. And we've got a presence sensor under that plastic tub. Which is the top one, CBU MOD 3M. So there's a reason why I'm actually, specifically why I'm using the CBU A2D. First of all, it's in DALI broadcast mode. Um, many of you won't really know what DALI is all about. Uh, it's essentially a, a lighting control system, which is wired based. Broadcast is a way of sending out DALI commands, um, which don't require any kind of acknowledgement. So the device sends the command via the wires, um, and the whatever is on the receiving end this device here in this case it's expected to just do its job okay so for example the command coming down these wires could be dim the lights to 80 percent and all of the lights that receive that command which theoretically should be all of them would then be expected to dim to 80 percent the, realistically the closest any of you are going to come to DALI is if you have uh, a DALI LED driver which is powering your lights and even then they're going to be stuck in your ceiling somewhere and your electrician probably put there them put them there for you so you, you, you won't uh, you won't even ever see them. DALI is predominantly used in um, large commercial building buildings things like uh, offices warehouses museums things like that. Okay that was network A. Network B I'll just change the app here. Network B contra contains three devices. <clears throat> uh, a CPU TED, which I've named the, in the app Square. An RGB light, which is powered by a battery, which is here. And then there's the third device, which is under gateways. And it's this one here. The CPU DCS. It's a bit hard to see that. Oh, there it is there. CBU DCS DALI Gateway. Um, so as you know, the, CBS, the CBU DCS is not a new product at all. Um, this DALI Gateway that we're using now isn't actually a different physical product, product either. It's just a different fixture profile for the DCS. Uh, it's not new at all. Uh, I believe it came out close to two years ago, if I remember rightly. Uh, I've not talked about this in the past because it's really something that's just used for commercial environments. So this device here in Gateway, DALI Gateway mode, would for example allow you to extend a physically wired DALI network with some Kasambi devices. Because what it does is it reads the DALI signal coming down these wires, it then translates it into Kasambi's language and talks to the Kasambi devices. Okay, I accidentally triggered the, uh, the presence sensor there, so I've actually jumped ahead of myself accidentally. So what this device is actually doing, in this case, when we toggle on this A2D, it's sending a DALI broadcast message down these wires, okay, to say, turn on the lights on. This device here then translates that DALI message and tells all of the existing lights in the Kasambi network to turn on at whatever percentage the 
DALI broadcast command was. The reason I've chosen the A2D is because of its milliamp output from here. Uh, I've tried this with, I've tested this with the ASD, and unfortunately, the output from the uh, ASD isn't enough to really fully power uh, a DCS. I have to mention this is not at all in any way officially supported by Kasambi. Um, so you're doing this at your own risk. It's just, I'm doing this just to show you what can actually happen or what can be done. Considering the, I believe the DCS only takes three milliamps or draws three milliamps, um, which is not a problem for the A2D. It's just that this method of the way it's connected is not uh, officially supported by Kasambi. So if it goes bang, try and hunt me down. Don't go blaming Kasambi. So, moving back to network A, if I toggle on DALI broadcast, okay, uh, looks like I've got remember last state enabled, which I didn't realize. So. It's dimmed to yeah, roughly 11, 10 plus 10, 11 percent, which is actually ideal because if these these lights are so bright, they will overexpose, and then the camera will try to compensate, compensate, etc. So, what's happened there is I toggled this light, this device on. Normally, there would be an LED driver attached to it, which would then power on the lights. But because I'm using the ASD gate, uh, the the DCS gate, DALI gateway. That same power on signal has been translated to the other network to turn these lights on. So if I now toggle this device back off, okay, you see that it sent another signal down those wires to say turn the light, turn or turn off. Okay. If I just quickly resume automation, we can now do the same thing. So effectively, if I lift this up, my automation hasn't resumed. No, it still hasn't resumed. Yes, it has. Just took a delay. Okay, you'll see it's running under automation. And that icon above. And again, just to show you again. I've, I've got it set to a five second linger time, so it's very short. And there they go. You can see they're going on and off at slightly different times. Obviously, they're different device, uh, they're different luminaires with different LEDs. So we'll cover that over. I'll change to network B again. So just to show you, this time you should see the everything react. Yeah. Okay, I've got the level. I've got the levels very low because the scene that I'm, that I'm executing actually has the levels of the devices set very low so that they camera doesn't overexpose them. So I'll cover that back over for now. So in its default state, this DCS DALI gateway is telling everything. It's forwarding this broad DALI broadcast map cost message on to absolutely everything in the network. But let's say for instance that we don't want all of the lights to react to this this message. Let's presume that when there is presence seen on this device, we only want one single light in network B to come on. Okay. So the way we do that is we change what is called the control scope within the DALI DCS controller. And before you do that, you need a scene setup. So what I've done here is created a scene, a, a scene called square only, which controls the square light there at 100%, which admittedly is quite bright. So I'll just turn it on and back off. If we then go to more, Dali gate, the DALI DCS gateway is under the gateways tab, as you saw earlier. I'll select it. And what I'm now going to change is the control scope. So by default, it says all luminaires. But I'm going to change that to this scene called square only, which, as you know, 
only controls, uh, sorry, only contains the square light here. So if I back out of that, now what should happen is that whenever we print, we trigger presence, only that square light should react. The round RGB light should not react. So let's give it a go. There we go. Give it five seconds to time out and it should go off. That's it. So that was it really. Uh, it might sound or might seem a little bit complicated so you might want to watch this video once or twice or a couple of times to get uh, used to it. <coughs> uh, and theoretically it could be used for all sorts of reasons but like I said this what you would the only thing you would need to test through trial and error is how long these wires can be. Uh, the the true DALI limitation is 300 meters. However, this uh, the Kasambi devices are not officially Kasambi uh, approved. They don't have the DALI label on them. Uh, pretty much because they're not using uh, or they're using a slightly lower voltage than DALI, so that you you would never get anywhere near the the uh, the approved 300 meters from this device. Uh, I can't offer any bad advice as to how long that wire could possibly be. Uh, again, you just you would have to test it through trial and error. But if you ever need uh, a solution which where you want to enable lights from one network to be triggered by a second network, this would work for you. Again, just to reiterate, this setup is not approved by Kasambi in any way. Um, it's just me tinkering, fiddling, experimenting, uh, and I noticed that it got it to work. I hope you found this at least interesting, if, uh, if not useful. Um, see you in the next video.